Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and, 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 and welcome back to the sh to the welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. Well, okay, it, it ends at three p.m. Pacific time, but either way, welcome back to this trippy food cost plus world market trippy food live stream. That's a lot, you know. Doodle heard me talking to nobody. He came in. He knows there's food. I do have Doodle snacks with me. It is the Prince of Dogness himself. So he'll be around for a little bit. Uh, looks like we had a slow start. We got four thumbs up already. We hadn't even started. So that's good. We have approval. And we haven't even started yet. Four thumbs up. Um, and uh, it looks like one person waiting. So we had early, very early father. Father Earl. I, I think it's Father Earl. I think there's, a, there's an L in there. It's hard to tell. Uh, he was uh, he was early, he or she, I'm sorry, was early. I'm just saying father, he, because father is a masculine name, um, was very early. And uh, our, our friend Stoner Kitchen was also very early, although he said he was late. But he was late for last week, but he's early for this week. So uh, they may be the only two people in the uh, in the chat right now. They might not even be in the chat right now. You know, there might not be anybody in the chat right now. I, I can't go by this stupid little number that says two. That may or may not be right. So it would be much, much too early for me to start reviewing the snacks, uh, being that there's only, there's only two people in the chat. I think there, I think there are two, there's two people in the chat. I don't know. Is, it, is there some special? Is it some special thing about this weekend? Uh, I imagine that uh, that maybe it's a back to school. I mean, it's a previous, previous, previous. It's a pre back to school weekend. Uh, some places. Maybe, maybe mid-August they start back in school. I know a lot of places they, they usually do it like the day after Labor Day, uh, which is the first Monday in September. Um, but I don't know. I mean, uh, it's uh, there's a lot of fires here on the West Coast, and so today it looks a little bit smoky. Could be smoggy. Could be foggy. I don't know. Uh, but uh, it's, not, uh, it's not typically bright and sunny. Uh, which is good because the temperature is kind of down a little bit. So it's about in the 80s. Drew Horse just walked into the room and he he doubled the number up here. So it was it was two and now it's now it's five. Now it's going up there. So um, I don't know. I guess maybe um, I'm not sending out um, as I'm not sending out any uh, notifications by Facebook anymore just because, like I said, Facebook told me I was spamming because I was inviting people who weren't. Um, who weren't accepting it and, and assuming that I'm spamming uh, people that I don't know. And so um, so I didn't do that this week. I did not send any notifications via Facebook that I was going to, um, that we were going to be doing a live stream and when it, when it wasn't anything. And so I'm ho I was hoping that everybody remembers that at 1 p.m. on Saturday uh, at 1 p.m. Pacific time every week we do our show unless specified otherwise. So, uh, and I can't think of any time in the near future, maybe, but we'll see. Uh, I can't think of any time in the near future where we've had to change it. And if we do, you know, we'll change it to Sunday, maybe change it to Friday. I'm not sure. Also, I need to apologize. I don't know how many people are on that, uh, that have other channels. And I need to apologize because I know I haven't gotten to some of your videos. I never had a chance to watch some of your videos. Um, I've started working again, which is a good thing, but it, uh, it does suck up a lot of my time. And it's not like I can watch them while I'm working. So um, so my apologies to you if I have not gotten to some of your videos, but uh, I will. And uh, I will get caught up and um, and let you guys know. So, hey, Food Taster TV is in the room. So can uh, Canada is well represented so far. Uh, I'm sure we'll have others. Uh, well, I take that back. So hang on one second here. A little bit of research. So Drew... Uh, Drew Horst, uh, where are you? Uh, where are you from? Because I don't have like on um, uh, my little handy dandy list that tells me where people are from and how how often they they come into the channel and everything. I don't have anything for you. So where are you? Uh, where are you located, Drew? Uh, you know, again, I don't need an address. I'm even in the neighborhood, just like the closest metropolitan city. That's fine. Uh, Janice, yes, just checking in sporadically during the birthday party I'm at. So I was a little bit worried that Janice was going to break her streak. Uh, of being the uh, the only person who has attended every single live stream we've ever done since the first one, so um, so I was afraid I was going to have to maybe give the trophy to somebody else, but uh, but Janice made it. She popped in. 
Um, she may not be here for a long period of time because she is attending a birthday party, but she is checking in. And thank you for doing so, Janice. And thank you. Thank you for taking time away from what is probably a very, very nice birthday party to make us part of your afternoon. So thank you, Janice. Lois Griffin has just entered the room. Lois, I meant to ask you, Are I know um, as far as family guy that Lois Griffin is Peter Griffin's spouse, but I don't know if in real life uh, you are uh, the Peter Griffin that, that shows up in our, um, in our live chat, if you are uh, uh, the spouse of the Peter Griffin that shows up in the live chat, or chat are you? Uh, so we, we officially now have the UK in the room uh, with Lois Griffin, I believe. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Lois. And Icefish is in the room. Hey, Icefish. Haven't seen you since last night. Well, I actually didn't technically see Icefish last night, but um, he was on the um, he was on the Reckless Eating live stream where we played marbles, I think. I think I saw you in marbles, Icefish. Uh, I'm from the Quad Cities area. Uh, oh, Quad Cities, yes. Uh, Davenport, uh, Moline, uh, Rock Island, and I can't remember what the fourth one was. But I've moved close to, uh, closer to the middle of Iowa. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was. Um, I have been to uh, Moline. Uh, so when, um, probably in the 80s, I had a job where I was traveling around the country uh, installing equipment and doing training and service and stuff like that. And uh, I, I, was, um, I was doing work at the Moline Daily Dispatch, which is one of the Quad Cities. And, um, and I remember that I parked my car at a meter but forgot to put money in the meter. And when I came back, there was a ticket on, on my window that said that I owed um, money for not, I mean, I, I owed, um, I, I got a ticket for not putting money in the meter. The meter took pennies and uh, I had not put enough pennies in the meter. Um, so I said, well, I'm going to pay this my, myself. So I went down to city hall to pay, to pay it. And it was like 50 cents or something like that, or a dollar, something, something along those lines. And I'm like, I am happy to pay this. So, um, yeah, my, that's my experience with the quad city. There, there used to be a, a, um, I think it was a club downstairs and upstairs with a restaurant. It was called Veely's. It was in the old Veely mansion. I think Veely had something to do with cars or automobiles, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but I don't think Veely's is around anymore. Drew, is that correct? Um, or have you been to, um, have you even been to Moline? Uh, Peter is in quarantine. I am taking his place tonight. Okay, thank you, Lois. Um, so, so Lois, am I, am I correct in assuming that you are the spouse of Peter Griffin? Is that correct? Is Peter okay, Lois Griffin? Uh, TV, quarantine, ATM, food, you okay? Everybody's asking. Um, oh, because because um, Food Taster says he's in quarantine, I guess, and um, Peter is in quarantine. So it's kind of going back and forth. Uh, P uh, Food Taster TV says he's okay, and I hope Peter gets it. We all hope Peter gets better soon. Peter is the life of the party when he's, when he's online. That sounds right. Illinois takes every cent they can from everyone. Yeah, it was a cent, though. It was a pennies in the parking meter. Pennies. Not quarters. Not dollars. Pennies. I'm sure that I'm sure that's not the case anymore, but uh, oh, I just got I just got a uh, a text. It, it must be something very, very important. Somebody who says, hey, I'm sorry, I can't make the show today or or hey, you need to act on this right real quick. No, I earned a shepherd's reward card on my next cost plus world market purchase. Isn't that ironic? Isn't that funny? Because we're doing a Cost Plus World Market show today. Maybe they're watching. Maybe Cost Plus World Market is, is watching. Um, again, I'm not sure. I, I know that it used to be called Cost Plus World Market, and maybe they did away with the Cost Plus part, and it's now just called World Market. I don't know. Maybe somebody out there knows. Uh, no Tom today. No Tom yet. Um, we may have Tom. Tom sometimes doesn't isn't there. I mean, usually he's there at the beginning. He's using like uh, three minutes till five o'clock, Charlie. Uh, we don't have we don't have Tom on early today, but we may have a, a visit from Tom today, and we'll find out whether Tom is doing his live stream uh, two hours after the end of our live stream. So, I believe they have closed, but not too sure. Yeah, again, I have not been to the Quad Cities in, since since the late '80s. So, um, so yeah, I don't you know don't really know what's going on down there. So, no John King or Tom, not yet. Oh, hey, we said no Tom and. Tom pops up. I'm here, but been busy. I will have my stream. Oh, good. Okay, Tom. That's good to know. So, so Tom is here lurking in the background, just like Janice is. Maybe they're at the same birthday party. Um, lurking in the background as, as is Janice, uh, but very busy. And he will do, be doing his stream 
at 5 p.m. Pacific time, whatever that works out to, to in your neck of the woods. Uh, six years, seven months, not months. Six years. Oh, wait, wait. I'm sorry. Uh, hello, Valerie. We're going to make a stream. Been a bad week. Fine. Uh, Beyonce and I have six months. Oh, no. No, 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 no. That sucks. The Cassandra. I'm so sorry to hear that. Well, you know, even if it's not messily, it's still bad. I mean, still, it's still sad, but um, that's that's a shame. I'm 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 really sorry. But uh, so thank you for joining us, and maybe we will try to we will try to make you feel a little bit better today. You know, we can't erase what has happened, but maybe maybe we'll bring a little bit of sunshine into your day. I hope so, and I hope you you are feeling better, uh, not health wise, but you know, emotionally. And I'm sorry to hear that. So uh, I said, and I I raised my voice, so Doodle came back in. So I think Doodle here. Doodle, come and say hi to everybody. Come on. Come on up. Come on up. Say hi to everybody. It's Doodle, the Prince of Dogmas. Doodle, are you going to say hi? Can I wave hi? Hi. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Doodle, the Prince of Dogmas. Doodle, you want a snack? He's, he's checking out the snacks, my snacks. He can't have any of the snacks. This one has garlic in it. Uh, you know, who knows what is in the other stuff. So he cannot have that. So um, so I have doodle snacks. Would you like a doodle snack? I will give you a doodle snack. But we're going to pace you, okay? You're going gonna to pace yourself. you got to spread this out and make this last, okay? We can't be giving you snacks all day. Did you finish your, your food out in the kitchen? Here, I'm going to give you a doodle snack. And off he goes. He'll be back. He knows that there are snacks. Oh, actually, he's sticking around. Cool. All right. Let's see. What did I miss? I'm very, very sorry. Um, you know, but Doodle. Do, hey, John King is in the room. Now everybody's in the room. And again, um, we expect to see Tom and Janice pop in and out, but both here. Um, let's see. Tom changed the game with the Reuben Balls. Yeah, and and I, I have to again. I have to apologize now that we have more people in the room. I have to apologize that that other people who do have channels that I like to check out and I like to keep up with, I have not been able to because uh, my I, I've started work, work work, and um and it it, it it kind of drains my energy. So I've I've um it's not like I can I can watch or catch up on any of these things during the day, and I have to do it afterwards. So uh, so I've not caught up on uh, what a lot of other people are doing, but I will, and I promise I will, and I will I will. Back, I will go back and check all these these wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, postings. I imagine, I mean, you know, deep fried Reuben balls. It just sounds amazing. It sounds totally amazing. Uh, let's see, uh, what did I miss? Oh, Element Thirteen is in the room. Element Thirteen. I don't recall seeing you in the chat previously. I know, I know I have not seen you in the chat before. Element uh, Thirteen. So, uh, what brings you to our what brings you to our live stream, and uh, and where are you from? And again, I don't need address. I don't need you know like uh, you don't have to give me GPS coordinates or anything. But, you know the general area where you're from, Element Thirteen, and welcome, uh, Robert Gillen, back in the room. Wow, it's been a while, Robert, uh, but it's good to see you again. Glad you could make it. Do you watch Mark Wines? No, I I don't. But should I? Um, I'm because I'm, I'm unaware of Mark Wines, so I might even subscribe to Mark Wines and not even know it. I'll have to go uh, go double check, but uh, but should I watch Mark Wines? Should I should I collaborate with Mark Wines? I don't know. Let me know, Robert. Uh, okay, everybody's uh, exchanging niceties. We're a right. I'm going to wait one minute, and at 1:15, we have enough people in the room. I, it says 10 up here. I don't know. It looks like there's more than 10 in the chat, but we will we will we will wait till 1:15, and at 1:15, we will review our snacks. So again, as a reminder. This week, all of our snacks were procured at Cost Plus Market, and so uh, so my advice to, to you, especially some of the some of the foodie types out there that are interested in finding interesting foods, and snacks, and stuff like that, is to is if there is a Cost Plus World Market, and I know they're all over the U.S. Um, if there is a Cost Plus World Market near you, I don't know if they're in Canada. The Cassandra um, is is there a Cost Plus World Market in Canada? Uh, but I know that they're in the U.S. They're all across the U.S. And if there's one near you, definitely check it out. Um, so Cosmos World Market is kind of, uh, if anyone remembers Pier 1, it's one of those kind of places where they have, like, you know, uh, artisan furniture, uh, lamps, um, 
greeting cards, you know, just kind of like like artsy kind of kind of stuff. But they do have a very very well stocked, interesting, eclectic food section. And um, and so in the past and other shows that we've done, I, I have gotten a lot of the uh, stuff for the show at Cost Plus World Market. But uh, this show, I wanted to to specifically highlight Cost Plus World Market and some of the things that were available. Like I think um, on the shelf, we probably have a couple of those. Uh, I know Tom, you've done them, and I think Janice has done them. The um, Ento Life, I think it is the um, the crickets that come in that little test tube. Um, they have those at Cost Plus World Market, and the ones that we've done on the show before, we've gotten at Cost Plus World Market. So it's kind of what we're doing. Mark Wines is a famous YouTuber who reviews food around the world. Oh, okay, so he's probably out of my league. Probably if I contact him and goes, "Hey, how would you like to do a um, a collaboration?" He would probably say, mm, "Yeah, no, I don't think so." Uh, but you know, uh, I will I will check it out. I will check out Mark Wines. Um, he does. He probably doesn't need my help. Let's put it that way. Uh, if you collaborate with him, your subs will blow up. Yeah, well, that's probably the thing is is if if I ask him to collaborate with me, he probably will make the assumption that I'm collaborating with him so that my subs will blow up. And that's really kind of not what I want to do. So, um, But, you know, like I said, I'll check it out. Um, I will reach out to him. If he's around the world, the chances of him being in Southern California at any given time is, are probably slim. But, you know, it's it's always worth checking out. Mark Wines is a huge food reviewer and has millions of subscribers, and he travels the world to try street foods and restaurants from different countries. Yeah. Well, it sounds like he has a, a, a larger budget than I do, certainly. It would be epic if you collaborated. All right, I'll check it out. Someone moved your door, Doodle. Uh, probably Doodle going in and out. Uh, that's okay. Uh, John King, when are you uploading video? Yes, that's a good question, Lois. Thank you for bringing that up because John... John um, has done some videos and we're still waiting for John to upload some videos. So John, what's gonna be? Pudding Power is in the room now. Now it's a party. Welcome Pudding Power. Uh, Lois, I'm having trouble downloading at the moment. Well, the problem is not downloading, the problem is uploading. Uh, let's see, Val, come save me. I'm trapped inside this hamburger. That is a very, very tiny hamburger. I don't know if I can save you. I would need an X-Acto knife to save you from that, that hamburger. And if I try to save you from that hamburger, I have a feeling that I'm going to damage my screen. So um, you're kind of on your own. As long as you can watch and participate from inside that hamburger, more power to you. We'll see if we can get you some help. Hey, Bob in the room. It's been a while, Bob. I have not seen you. I know that you're uh, you're uh, now gainfully employed again. And in your line of work, which I think was catering, but I don't know if, it's, if you're still doing catering or, or now back with in a restaurant, um, I know that that, you know, you, weekends are like, what are weekends, right? So your weekend might be a Wednesday or something along those lines. But but it's always good to see you, Bob. Um, and I'm looking forward to when I can get back home uh, uh, to actually see you in person. So, uh, so welcome back. It's good to see you. I've not seen you in a while. Uh, let's see. Uh, John King, share your YouTube channel link. Uh, yeah, we're still waiting. Uh, Mark is a really cool dude. He just collabed with a small channel and did reviews in Arizona. He's originally from Phoenix. Oh, oh, cool. Well, that's good to know. Well, again, you know, I, I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to, I'm, I doubt he's watching this right now, but, um, but uh, you know, uh, I'll give it a shot. What the hell? And if any of you guys know him personally, you know, uh, reach out and let him know, you know, say, hey, I know this guy, not not guy, but I know this guy, and he does uh, YouTubing and everything, and it'd be cool to see a, a, a collaboration. So, you know, any word you guys can put in would help. Otherwise, I don't know how to get in touch with these guys. A rare Saturday off. Yeah, that's exactly what I mean. So, um, you know, a banquet and restaurant. Okay. Hope everyone's good. Are you watching the Food Olympics? Well, there's the Olympics Olympics, but I don't know about the Food Olympics. This is a really, this is a really weird time right now. So it's 2021. And everyone is watching the 2020 Olympics in 2021. It's not like it's like, you know, they have a DeLorean that, that got 88 miles an hour and we're back in 2020 watching the Olympics. It's a, that they're holding the Olympics this year, but they're calling them the 2020 Olympics. Uh, another thing is the um, the L.A. County Fair. So that this, typically the L.A. County Fair does um, uh, does the fair in um, in August every year. This year, they're not doing a, a L.A. County Fair. So the 2021 one is off. I think they're doing a foodie kind of thing, but but there's no fair this year. But next year for 2022, they are actually moving the fair to May from August. Now, that's the one thing about the L.A. Fair. I love the L.A. County Fair. 
Uh, it's always been a great thing, but it they, they always have it in August. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with August in Southern California, but it's always brutally hot. So it'll be nice to have it in May, actually, when it's a lot, a lot cooler. That'd be that'd be really cool. But in the in their history, they've always had it in in August, and now they're moving it to May. So, you know, strange times that we are going through. Uh, it is strange they have to rename the 2021 Olympics from last year because of COVID-19. Well, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Like, so the thing is, it it throws off the mathematics of it, right? Because the the Olympics are every four years. And so 2020 was an even number year, 2021 years and off, off a number year. They they had to cancel the Olympics last year because of COVID. They're doing it this year, but they're not calling it the 2021 Olympics. They're calling it the 2020 Olympics. Go figure. I don't know. It's like, it's a math thing. And, I, and I'm not, math is not my best subject or my favorite subject. Uh, let's see. Uh, am I missing anything? My videos won't load for some reason. Um, hmm. I wonder what that reason is, but, um, hmm. Maybe, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, technically I might be able to help you, but, um, it might take some time. Uh, it's gross here outside of Chicago, 95% with humidity. You are, you're right off the lake. Yeah. So that you have that humidity that comes off the lake. Like I, I don't know if they have like every year there's like a die off on the lake where like there's all kinds of dead fish rotting on the shores of the lake. And then, you know, with the heat, they're cooking. And then like, so so in Chicago, all you smell is the dead fish rotting in the lake. I don't know if that's a, a normal, regular thing, but I know in the past it's happened a lot. It's hot, yeah. The 20 Olympics are being played in 21 because of 19. Huh, that's right. Again, math putting power, and I'm not a big fan of math. So uh, I also feel the Olympics should be held using the original dress code. Well, when you say original dress code, uh, you, are you talking about the original Greek Olympics um, that were held in ancient Greece because I think they were naked in the original Olympics. Uh, but then, but then when you say the original dress code, if you're talking about the modern Olympics, which I think was in the late 1800s, uh, the Olympics started up again. They were probably like dre fully dressed, completely fully dressed. So I don't know. Uh, go figure. Times change. So I was swimming competitions. Team Sweden is kicking the USA. Yeah, this is. Uh, uh, I saw something really quickly that said that this is the first year ever that the United States did not get any gold medals on the first day. So, um, uh, yeah, go figure. No gold medals for the U.S. on the first day. So, uh, Japan is keeping this game safe. Good. Yeah. Uh, playing the em uh, empty stadiums. Uh, very, very strict rules as far, you know, for, for COVID. They have to. I mean, you're getting all those people together. Uh, I think they all have to have like negative COVID tests and there's a lot of people who like, you know, who couldn't come in, who couldn't participate because of how strict they are in, uh, in, in the rules and regulation. But really, I mean, if, if you think about it, if, if, if Japan was blamed for a super spreading event, having the Olympics in there, that would be uh, terrible. So they have to be very, very careful. I mean, I think that's what's going on. Hi, Panama Red 72. Yes, Panama Red just snuck into the room. Welcome, Panama Red. Panama Red. Good to see you again. I'm moving to California next month, Brother Val. Are you moving up to Reading? Is that, if I'm not mistaken, is that right, John? Moving up to Reading? Maybe your maybe your your uh, connectivity will improve in uh, in Reading. The ancient Greeks weren't naked; they wore a thick coat of olive oil for protection. Oh, that's much different. They must have been covered with. Fly. Can you picture the amount of flies that were attracted to the olive oil? And it's for for protection from what? What does olive oil protect you from? That is amazing. I think this Thanksgiving I make another buffalo turkey. Oh my God, that sounds good. That sounds awesome, actually. Buffalo turkey. Wow. Maybe I'll make that a Thanksgiving episode and then I'll credit you, of course, Stoner. Uh, Japan is only 20% vaccinated, so they're being as careful as they can, even with a lot of the citizens not wanting the games to happen. I'm, yeah, I'm not surprised. Seeing you with Matt Zion, I am from Wisconsin. Oh, are you a cheesehead? Um, I enjoy food and I'm an Italian cook. Oh, I'm Italian. My mom is an Italian cook, I suppose. Um, well, it depends on what you mean by cook. You mean like an actual cook, like in a restaurant? My mom cooked at home. Uh, Italian American. My mom is first generation American. Uh, her parents were from Italy. But um, but welcome, Element 13. Good to see you. Glad you can make it. Head cheese. Now, John, this is where you start throwing things out randomly. Um, and we're supposed to uh, guess what you mean by it. Now, uh, if, if you're asking, has anybody had ched, head cheese? Are you making head cheese? We should eat head cheese. 
Um, the answer to that, to that is yes, no, and yes. So um, I love head cheese. Maybe eat it every opportunity I have. Um, no, I don't make head cheese. And uh, three or C, uh, yes, um, whatever that that question was. So I don't I don't know. Injected with melted butter, garlic, and buffalo sauce. Well, you you actually inject it with the buffalo sauce as of putting the buffalo sauce on the outside. I would, I thought you meant like making a turkey, like you would make buffalo wings. Um, so, but either way, it sounds interesting. Been watching the Create Channel on PBS. They have all these traveling shows, cooking shows. Are you a fan of Rick Steves or Samantha Brown? Um, I've actually met both of them. I've actually met Rick Steves and Samantha Brown. Met them at, there was a travel show in uh, Long Beach, California. This was a few years back. And actually met both Rick Steves and Samantha Brown. Both very, very cool people. So, uh, yes, I'm a fan of both of them. Uh, olive oil was marinated. They ate the losers. <laughs> and if they do it in the summer, they actually cook using the olive oil. That's funny. Uh, they have a lot of traveling in Europe, both American and great cook. Do love cheese, so that must be a cheese head. Well, you know, you know, being from Wisconsin and everything. Um, but I mean, like, if you attend, I, I try to remember what is it the the pack, the Green Bay Packers? You know, where that they wear the cheese on their head in, uh, when when they uh, attend the games. I've not been to a game, so I don't know. Both injected and basted. That sounds so good. The answer to John uh, John is kumquat head cheese is made from kumquats. Yes, kum. John, uh, Tom Kumquat is always the correct answer. All right, so uh, I've been I've been yapping and I I bypass my uh, quarter quarter after deadline for reviewing the snacks, but that's okay. Uh, we do have our our standard food and drink ultimate foodie quiz cards that we pretend to read from every every week. So we do have those. We will be doing more of those. Uh, today we're going to do do something. Uh, Maybe a little bit different. Actually, we kind of started it last week, but I thought it might be a good thing to do on an ongoing basis. You guys let me know. Show of thumbs or show of hands. Um, you know, should we continue to do this or should we go back to the way we, we, we did it? Let, let me explain what we're doing. So today I have a, a soft drink uh, or non-alcoholic beverage and I have an alcoholic beverage or a beer. Um, and so we're going to do both today. And I was just thinking that maybe moving forward, we should do that. We should just do a non-alcoholic beverage and an, al an alcoholic beverage on the same live stream every week. So I'm going to leave that up to you. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Should we do that every week? Is that okay with you guys? Or do you like that, that we used to alternate and do a uh, soft drink one week and beer the following week? Let me know. Okay. One beer, one and wine. That would be interesting. That would be different. Uh, I don't think we're. I don't think we are uh, sold on on just doing beer. I uh, we could do a wine. Now wine is a little bit more difficult because you know, I open a whole bottle of wine and I, there, there's no way I'm drinking a whole bottle of wine um, to do an episode. But I'm not opposed to it. So um, maybe you know that would be good. So John King, you said mix the beer and soda together. Did you watch our? Were you part of our live stream last week? Our, our Colombian foods live stream last week? I'll wait for any answer. Um, and in the meantime, let's start reviewing our snacks. So I'll do our beverages first since we're talking about beverages. I also have some water because you never, you never know. Always have some water because you never know when you're going to need some water. So John King, you watched the show last week and you, you knew that the reason that we, that we mixed the alcohol and the, and the um, soda together last week was because we were making a very, very specific drink that is that everybody in Colombia drinks, which is a refajo. And refajo is the uh, beer, half beer. In that case, we used Aguila, which is a, the, um, the kind of national beer of Colombia, and Colombiana, which is kind of the national soda of Colombia, and mix those two together to make refajo, which is an actual thing in Colombia. So that's why we mixed them together last week. We could do it as an experimental thing, but you'll see in a few minutes why that might be a little bit iffy, but we'll talk about it anyways. Uh, I'm drinking Simply Lemonade and eating an ice cream sandwich. What kind of ice cream sandwich? Because I would think that um, that not every ice cream sandwich would go well with a lemonade. That's just my thought. All right, so let's, uh, we'll start with our non-alcoholic beverage. This is uh, Fenton, Fentimins. Fentimins, it's not apostrophe S. Yes. I thought, I would think it was apostrophe S. Yes. It is not apostrophe S. Yes. It is Fentimins, all one word. Um, and they are from the UK. Let's see, I know I have, 
Oh, how is that even possible? Bear with me one second here. Let me get my let me get my stuff up here. Um, I did save this. There we go. All right. One second. All right. Cool. So, uh, Fentimans is from Hexham, UK. Hexham, H-E-X-H-A-M. I think I'm saying that right. Uh, Lois, could you could you correct my uh, my uh, British pronunciation? I'm, I want to I want to say it's Hexham. Um, that might be that might be wrong. It might be right. I don't know. It is in northern uh, England, uh, so it's kind of n maybe near the Scot the the um, border of Scotland. It's farther north. It's it's not near London at all. But uh, Fentimans has been around for a long, long time. Um, I don't know what that long time is. This uh, this is rose lemonade. So it is um, traditional botanical beverage with pure rose extract. So. Uh, I'm assuming there's an in here. Let's see, carbonated water, lemon juice concentrate, yes. Um, beet sugar, that's interesting. Uh, glucose sugar, fermented ginger root extract. There's ginger in there, that's nice. Uh, ginger root pear juice concentrate. I don't know what that's doing in there. Um, yeast, uh, let's see, natural flavors, lemon, orange, uh, tartaric acid, whatever that is, citric acid, well, that's citric acid, lemon. Uh, color and uh, Bulgarian rose oil. So that sounds very interesting. So it so uh, uh, rose rose water is something that's used frequently in Middle Eastern and Indian dishes. That um, it's like um, I think they soak rose petals until the water absorbs the flavor of the rose petals, and they use that in a lot of cooking. As Food Taster TV, if you're still out there, I'm sure I'm sure a lot of stuff that you make has rose water in it or is rose water flavored. Um, so that's that's our non-alcoholic beverage, um, our top of the pops beverage for today, and our alcoholic beverage is from Allagash Brewing in Portland, Maine, not Oregon, Portland, Maine. Uh, this is uh, Curiu. I don't. I'm, I'm not sure actually how to pronounce that. I'm gonna guess Curiu because uh, it's kind of like Belgian Frenchish kind of thing, and this is a Belgian style golden ale. Uh, made or aged in bourbon barrels, it is a whopping 10.2%. The uh, the woman who I was talking to, who works at Cost Plus World Market, told me this is a very, very good beer. So I took her word for it, and we are going to try this beer. Uh, anything else that you need to know about this? Uh, no, uh, just that it's Allagash Brewing Company, Portland, Maine, and it is 10.2% ABV. So that is our alcoholic beverage that we're going to do today. Let's see if I... Chat disconnected. What? Chat disconnected. Please wait while we try to reconnect you. What the hell happened? That's bizarre. Successfully connected. I hope I didn't miss too much. Let me know if I did. Let's see. Uh, Val, you should watch Texas Eats. Is Texas Eats, Eats on YouTube, John? John, you are constantly sending me on snipe hunts. Uh, so, so constantly you are sending me to mix you a batch of spotted paint. And um, uh, and so, John, I have to take everything that you tell me uh, with a grain of salt. That the last the last adventure I was on was going to Walmart and asking them for that uh, um, what was it the the donor colada, and they thought I had like two heads. And then I did, a, did an internet search for it, and there's no nothing nothing whatsoever about donor um, colada anywhere on the internet. So you know, I, I I can never tell when you're just sending me on these wild goose chases. Uh, Fendermans is good. Yes, I think we, we might have done another. I, I think we did the Curiosity Cola, the Fendermans uh, Curiosity Cola on a previous episode. So we did that. Uh, Drew's taking off. Oh, off to work now, but still be listening. Okay, Drew. Well, thank you for uh, for being able to um, to participate, even if it's audibly uh, on on uh, at, at work. So thank you for, for jumping in and thank you for staying on. Hexum, you got it. Okay, that's what I thought. Um, Lois, I got my um, I got my ability to pronounce um, uh, you know British uh, British names and everything from my my lengthy time in Massachusetts. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, I like Pellegrino sparkling Mandarin orange soda. I I always thought pa Pellegrino just did the sparkling water. I didn't realize that they did sodas as well. So uh, I would have to try that. I'd like to try that. Belgian bubble <laughs> soda. That's fun. Am I a fan of Pellegrino? I, again, I, uh, I've only had the sparkling water, which I like. But uh, no doodle, it's too early for another snack. But thank you for being here. 
We can see you on video, Val, and hear you. Yeah, but there was a message. It says, chat disconnected. Please wait while we try to, uh, the chat, not necessarily the stream, but uh, it said, chat disconnected. Please wait while I try to reconnect you successfully connected. So that's kind of weird. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. No cards today. No, we have cards today, but we haven't started opening opening our snacks. We will do cards with our snacks. Yes, Texas Seed is on YouTube. Well, I'll check it out. All right, so let's get into our snacks now. Doodle, doodle. No, no, no snack yet. No snack yet. You pace yourself. Pace yourself, man. Self-control. All right. So uh, our first item on our hit parade is this is from Lily's Q. It's really hard to Q, but it's there, Lily's Q. Another question is what is the Q? Is it like Q the critic? What is that Q? That Q is for barbecue. So it's the end of barbecue because uh, Lily's is a barbecue place. Um, where is it? Uh, I think they started in Chicago. So this um, this is hot pepper vinegar kettle chips. Lily's uh, Lily's Q is uh, from Chicago. I think they they're branched out. I think maybe they have a place in Louisiana as well. I'm not completely sure. Uh, this is uh, let's see, back home in Greenville, South Carolina. That's where Grandma Lily is from, uh, Greenville, South Carolina. Uh, Taught Charlie the art of using authentic, regionally inspired Southern flavors to serve up taste and traditions all their own. Ever since Charlie's first opened in Lily's Q in Chicago in 2010, we're going to do the same. So they're, they're Chicago-based, but Lily, the, the grandma, is from Greenville, South Carolina. So, you know, they incorporate the South into there. Gluten-free, zero trans fat, no preservatives, no artificial colors or flavors. Um, try your other kettle chips, Carolina Dirt, Pimento Cheese sea salt and black pepper, buttermilk, sweet onion, and original. But this is the only one that um, that uh, Cost Plus World Mark carried. Ingredients, potatoes. That's always good when you're eating chips to see the first ingredient is potatoes. Uh, potatoes, sunflower and or canola oil, apple cider vinegar powder. Yeah, apple cider vinegar. That's good. Well, actually, is it though? Because I'm thinking malt vinegar is nicer for, uh, for you know, so, sort of like in, in Canada uh, or, or in the U.K., when you have your chips and you want to put some vinegar on it, you're usually going to put malt vinegar on it. In this particular case, it's apple cider vinegar, uh, food, food starch, food starch. I know what food starch. Salt, spice, garlic powder. Ah, pretty basic. Although there is a uh, Proposition 65 warning. I think we talked about Proposition 65 here. Um, anyone from California is well versed and familiar with Proposition 65. So apparently, it is a regulation that's that stipulates that. If, if, if anything in your package or your food or your product contains, contains any substance that is on the list, the Proposition 65 list, that is known to, have, to cause cancer or reproductive harm, they have to put a sticker on the product that says, uh, consuming this product can expose you to uh, whatever, which is known to the state of California to cause cancer and or birth defects or the reproductive parent harm. Now, in some cases, it's the bag. It's the bag itself. So the ink that's used in the bag or the or what the, the bag is made out of um, contains one of those substances that, that has been known to cause cancer or reproductive health. So in, in California, if you want to sell a, any product in California, um, it has to have the Proposition 65 label on it if it contains any one of the substances that's on the list. Bizarre, I know, but... Um, we're going to eat it anyway. I don't think we're going to get cancer from eating these chips. Uh, let's see. I, I missed some stuff. Uh, rose lemonade sounds right up my alley. Yeah, food taster. I, um, I was just mentioning that, that I know that a lot of uh, Middle Eastern and Eastern European and even Indian uh, cuisine uses rose water a lot in rosin. Uh, Let's see. Uh, Samuel Duran snuck in, snuck into the room while I was busy yapping. Welcome, Samuel. Have not seen you in a while, but welcome, Samuel. Uh, kettle chips are overdone. My workplace has a vending machine. There's so many kettle chips, and there's always a picture of the Rock Mountain on the bags. Yeah, kettle chips are. Uh, I think there's Kettle Brand, and then there's everybody else who does kettle kettle chips. So um, it seems like it's getting more and more frequent. This ke uh, kettle chips. Uh, let's see. Did I miss anything? California has too many propositions. Don't help society. Only control our basic freedoms. It, it, it is very restrictive. Um, California was the only state to ban foie gras, to ban the con consumption of foie gras. Uh, California is one of few states that, uh, that now bans um, the consumption of horse meat. Uh, uh, not even the consumption of these horse meat, the production of horse meat, the sale of horse meat, the purchase of horse meat, anything, any, anything related to a horse, separate California law. 
uh, California is the first state to ban uh, shark's fin soup. Uh, they there there is a um, there is a conditional clause in there that if you can show that you took the whole shark, you can you can sell the fin for um, for shark's fin soup. But you have to be able to prove that you took the whole shark and didn't just took, take the fins off and throw it back in the ocean. So yeah, California is very, very, very strict on all kinds of stuff like that. You're right. There are a lot of propositions and a lot of state laws and um, uh, that that are very restrictive, especially with, uh, when it comes to food. So don't eat the bag. That's an excellent idea. I will not. I'm not going to tear it open with my mouth just in case. Uh, horse meat I can understand, but duck liver fat can't be that bad. It is not the duck liver fat itself. It is the production of that duck liver fat. So it is the process of gavage, which is force feeding the ducks and the geese to enlarge their livers. That is why it is banned in California. So, uh, all right. Second on our list, we're already like almost almost an hour in. I gotta I gotta get moving on it. See, Janice is at that party and she's not here to go. Come on, Val, step it up. Uh, so this is uh, Almond Brothers, which I think is cute because I think it's probably a play on Almond Brothers, the uh, Southern rock band, the Almond Brothers. Uh, Almond Brothers. Uh, these are orange almonds with cayenne pepper. That sounded really interesting. These just jumped. I mean, these, they, they kind of had my name written all over them. Orange almonds with cayenne pepper. They do have different flavors. Uh, two brothers with a passion for good music and music. They go back to the music again. Uh, but they're not almonds. I don't think the people are not almonds. Um, I would have to check that out. Maybe their name is almond, and and they do almonds. The ingredients: almonds, pure cane sugar, ground cayenne pepper, citric acid, natural orange zest flavor. Doesn't that sound good? It, nothing fake in there. That sounds so good. Val, I recommend you eating bread in a can. Uh, John King, I want you to go back to our channel and I want you to do a search for brown bread. Um, we've eaten bread in a can. Uh, I love uh, kettle cooked chips. Back in Iran when we lived there in 1980s and 1990s, the only potato chips were, oh, wow, that's interesting. Uh, kettle cooked chips came in clear plastic packaging with cardboard branding stapled on top. It must be, it's like a different world there. That would be so fascinating. Uh, coconut chocolate bars. I'm not sure. Uh, oh, I was thinking Almond Joy. Okay, coconut chocolate. Yeah, I got it. Almond Brothers coconut. Yeah. Um, this I thought was interesting. It's a piece of bacon. I mean, how often do you go in the store and you see a piece of cooked bacon? Uh, this is actually flavored cooked bacon. And this is from Bacon on the Go. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Almond Brothers uh, is from Phoenix, Arizona. And I love their slogan, which is everybody loves our nuts. I, I'm not making it up. That's their slogan. Uh, so this is from, uh, it's called Bacon on the Go. It is it is amped up uh, Bacon on the Go. It's from Riff's Smokehouse. Riff's Smokehouse is in Arden Hills, Minnesota. I know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't think of that either. And they have different flavors. This one is Habanero Heat. We'll see how much. They don't have like a level that tells you how hot it is. Habanero can be hot, but most of the time, Habanero products that I've had really haven't had that much heat. Uh, ready to eat for an amped up flavor microwave on high five seconds we are not going to microwave that because we don't have a microwave um i'm just gonna it says ready to eat i'm gonna eat it i'm ready to eat it uh there are ingredients they're so tiny that i'm not even gonna bother reading them but it is a piece of bacon it is habanero flavored bacon habanero heat um i saw the price tags on these so if you guys are interested in how much these things cost let me know this uh one slice of bacon was two dollars and 49 cents for a slice of bacon it's better be good bacon for $2.49. The Almond Brothers Orange Almond Ice Cream was $4.99. The uh, Lily Q's Hot Pepper Vinegar Kettle Chips were, uh, I don't know. It looks like three something, three something. It's half a tag on that one. Uh, let's see. We have, this one looked really inter interesting. I'm fascinated by this. This is a brio the brand is Briosa Gourmet, and this is sardine pate. It is a product of Portugal. Now, uh, the way this works is Briosa Gourmet is um, it's a, a, a like a local fishery in Portugal. They are in where in Portugal? Um, they are in uh, Fig. I'm going to say this poorly. I don't speak Portuguese very well. Uh, Figueira. Da Foz, uh, Portugal. 
That's where Brio Briosa was established, but it is distributed uh, collectively in the United States by a company called Tin Can Fish in Cambridge, Massachusetts. But it's sardine pate. Let's see the ingredients on this one. Um, sardine, olive oil, margarine. That's bizarre. Margarine. Um, whey powder, which is milk. Why would they, they, I don't know why they would put that in there. Uh, citric acid, artificial flavoring, beta carotene, tomato paste, vinegar, spices, and salt. Very, very odd combination. Sardine pate sounds fascinating. I can't wait to try this. Really excited about that. And price is not on the package. I don't think it was that expensive, though. Uh, and then uh, last but not least is our uh, Woodward Ave chicken spread. So it's, I guess it's like a chicken pate, I imagine. It's a chicken spread. I, I'm not seeing a lot of chicken spreads. I think maybe Underwood might might do a chicken spread. I'm not sure. But I just thought that was that was fascinating. Um, so the company is actually called Giovanni's Advertising Food Products. Um, and so the, the product line is called Woodward Ave. Uh, their specialty is chili. Uh, and um, it, it, they, they say it's Michigan's only canned chili. That's a specialty in, in Michigan. And you may be asking yourself, what is, what's the big deal with chili in Michigan? It actually came from Michigan. So Greek immigrants in Michigan started chili, making chili, and then it started working its way down. Hit Cincinnati, became something else. Hit Texas, became something else. So they do know a thing or two about chili, just not chili as we know it um, in Michigan. So they are from Michigan. This is uh, 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 Giovanni's Advertising Food Products from Richmond, Michigan. So I'm fascinated with that. Now, after I bought these, I, 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 I just realized I'm going to need some. I mean, I could eat the, the sardine pate and the chicken spread right out of the can. But, you know, we're not we're not heathen monsters. Right. So I, I did get these. Uh, these are not from uh, Cost Plus World Market. These are from um, our local Kroger store, which is Ralph's. And these are private selection classic water crisp crackers. So these are the equivalent of. Uh, what is the brand of the uh, cars? This is the equivalent of cars water crisp crackers. So basically, they're wheat, they're very very thin wheat crackers. They don't uh, impart a lot of taste and everything, and they make a nice palate to put things on. So um, I didn't I didn't kind of cover this in there because, like I said, this was just an afterthought that I got at Ralph's because of, you know we wanted to put something to put the um, sardine pate and the chicken spread on, and that's what we did. So I I was yapping for a long time. That's okay. I want to just go back here really quickly and make sure I didn't miss every, anything. Uh, let's see. We got the, the kettle chip thing. Uh, great. Now you hold bacon and Doodle comes back. Uh, Doodle couldn't. I don't think he could smell it through that. He's being good though. He's not. He's not jumping up now. He's being good. That's okay. I'm petting his little head here. I mean, it's big head. You know, the top one. I like Canadian bacon. It is more happy. Mm, Canadian bacon to me is more like ham, but you know, that's fine. I like it too. Thick bacon. Uh, it's thickish. It, it's not, it's not, it's not crispy because you can bend it and it doesn't break. So it's not crispy, um, but it looks dark. So it looks like, it, you know, it's looked like it's cooked crisp to crispy, but it's not crispy. But it, it also could be that it looks like there's some sort of like uh, fluid in there. That it's packed in, which would keep it uncrispy. So I don't know. We're gonna try it. We'll see what we'll see what happens. Is that Bob's Big Boy on your cabinet? Yes, it is Bob's Big Boy in your cabinet. So I don't remember if it was last week, or the week before. So uh, that was a Father's Day. Uh, it's a Funko, uh, a Funko uh, Bob, uh, 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 Big Boy. So that's Big Boy, and that's a Bob's Big Boy restaurant. Uh, and um, so I got that for a Father's Day gift from Julie. And the thing was, uh, I didn't know whether I w wanted to keep it in the box or take it out of the box and put it on the shelf. So um, I asked on the on the live stream, I asked what people thought I should do. And there was kind of mixed emotions, like people saying, take it out of the box. People say, leave it in the box, whatever. So I went to the source and I asked Julie and I said, Julie, I got the thank you for the so much for the Father's Day gift. Really appreciate it. But I'm just kind of like going through my mind. Do I want to take it out of the box? And put it on the, or leave it in the box and put it on the shelf. And she says, Dad, honestly, uh, if you're thinking about selling it on eBay, uh, there's not much of a resale value on that right now. Um, she said, just enjoy it. So take it out of the box, you know, play with it, leave it on the shelf and everything. And so that's what I did. So, yes, you are correct. That is a Bob's Big Boy. Uh, that's a Bob's Big Boy restaurant, and that's Big Boy right there. So you're absolutely correct. Uh, 
I like Canadian bacon, ham, Lisbon, Spain. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It's like you're asking questions about something, and I'm not sure what it is. Spain, uh, Spain is very famous for their ham, their Iberico ham. Um, there is a place uh, in Madrid. I don't know if there are in other places, but I know they're in Madrid called Museo de, de Amon, which is uh, the Museum of Ham. And I don't know if it's a mu museum per se, but if you, when you look in the store, it's like anything, everything about ham. Uh, and there, there are, you know, the legs of uh, Iberico ham hanging, hundreds, hundreds of them, all kinds of ham that you can sample and buy and, 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 and etc. So Spain is big on ham. Uh, I thought chili came from Mexico. No, not really. Um, uh, it depends on the, the cooking method. So chilies, chilies typically come from Mexico. Um, uh, and so like, I think uh, the, the cooking meats with chilies, uh, I think that that is kind of a Mexican thing. Uh, but chili per se, um, uh, I think the strongest, the strongest, I mean, there's paprika in it and everything. Like if you have Cincinnati chili, Cincinnati chili isn't, isn't particularly hot and spicy. It has things like chocolate and cinnamon in it. Um, uh, so it, uh, chili, especially like Greek chili, it's not particularly spicy. Um, it's a little bit different, but you know, that's chili as a dish. That's where that comes from. But like you, you, you are right. Um, uh, uh, chilies or the chilies that we use are, are native to central and South and South America. And so that's why a lot, a lot of that does come from Mexico. So Chili does come from Mexico, or, or a form of chili comes from Mexico, but the chili as we, as, I don't know, it's a long, complex thing. You, you're right, and, and we might be wrong at the same time. Freddy Kroger. Um, that's funny. Yeah, that is funny. Uh, nightmare for Safeway and Ralph's. Now would you eat blood chocolate, blood chocolate covered pickles and onions? I, what, what do you mean by blood chocolate? You mean like blood orange chocolate? Do you mean chocolate made out of blood? Do you mean chocolate meat, which is uh, uh, dinaguan, which is a Filipino dish that's made with uh, pork blood? What do you mean by blood chocolate? Because if you say blood chocolate covered pickles and onions, that sounds like dinaguan. Um, well, dinaguan has pickled peppers in it and onions in it, and it is uh, pork blood. They call it chocolate meat. So I, I'm not sure. Um, I'm, sure, I'm trying to remember if we did a Dinaguan episode. We might have done a Dinaguan. Yes, um, check out our uh, Trippy Food Blood Fest episode, and we eat Dinaguan on that episode. That, that might answer your question right there. The Bob's Big Boy and Cafe looks nice. It is nice. It is a it is a wonderful gift, and I thank Julie profusely, who is not here for some reason today. Uh, I'm, she's going to miss my core. She's going to have to to rate it later on. Uh, it needs a model 1950s caddy car. Yeah, maybe I'll get like a little um, matchbox, like a, a, an old matchbox car, and I'll put the matchbox car outside it. That would be fun. Uh, here in Southern California, uh, at the uh, at the Bob's Big Boy in Burbank, which is the oldest surviving Bob's Big Boy from 1949, every, I want to say Friday night, is it Friday night or Saturday? If they think it's Friday night, every Friday night, they have a car meet. In, in behind where they used to do the car hop service in the back there. And so you just see rows and rows and rows and rows and rows of the, like antique cars. Jay Leno shows up every once in a while. Not me, Jay Leno. Shows up every once in a while with his cars. Uh, and it's it's kind of a big thing. I don't know if they, like since COVID, they probably have not been doing that. I don't know if they started that back up again, but it's a big thing behind there. So yeah, uh, having a car there, that would be kind of a cool thing. Uh, I thought chili as a dish came from Mexico. Well, uh, at, it depends on what you mean by chili. Like, a, like in other words, if you eat a, like a birria, birria is it very much seems like chili. Uh, really, I, it's hard to say. I think we maybe should do some research on that before I start giving you some incorrect answers based on my guesswork. Um, but I just know that that uh, chili, as as a European Greek kind of dish, uh, did come from Michigan and work its way down. Um, they might have been doing something a lot similar to chili in Texas that they called chili. Might be different. I don't know. I'm not sure. All right. So we covered all our snacks. We did cover all our snacks, did we not? So we are almost at two o'clock. So we have a lot of catching up to do. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to open up our, our non-alcoholic beverage. I'm going to open up our soda first. I'm going to do that. Then I'm going to open up uh, the, our two uh, our two two of our snacks. 
Let's see. Because we have five snacks. I'm going to open two of our snacks and open the big ones. I'm going to open the hot pepper vinegar ch cheddar, ch cheddar yeah, kettle ki chips and the Almond Brothers orange almonds with cayenne pepper. We'll do those. Then I'm going to open up our beer. And then we'll do the remainder of our snacks, which is the bake, the um, habanero bacon, the sardine pate, and the chicken spread. Sounds like a plan? Sounds like a plan. Let's do it. Um, Val, you should do a live stream and and eat a five-pound chicken pot pie. Uh, we uh, we don't do competitive eating on Trippy Food. We are not competitive eaters. I, every once in a while, I'll, I will eat something stinky or sour or... Um, uh, you know, whatever, but we don't do we don't do uh, competitive eating here. So uh, a chicken pot pie in itself is not interesting. It is not an unusual food. It is not a trippy food. And it, so for me to eat a five pound chicken pot pie as part of a live stream, what what is where is the value in that? I'm not a I'm not a, a competitive eater where I could even eat five pounds of anything. Um, so I I think the that would I think I don't we're, uh, let me just say we're not going to do that. So uh, maybe reckless eating would do that. Maybe they would do that over in reckless eating, eating five pound chicken pot pie. I know not Natter would do that. Uh, uh, freak eating, he would do that. Um, maybe uh, Beyond Seattle Eats, they might do that. They might eat a five pound chicken pot pie. Uh, by the way, Katie came in fourth in the Nathan's hot dog eating contest in, at Coney Island. Um, you know, uh, Nuff uh, from, um, uh, from um, Main Event Palm. He might do that. We don't do that here. So, sorry. Uh, chili cheese fries and hot dog sounds good, right? It does sound good. Uh, Val, have you done sustrumming? I did sustrumming. That was one of our first episodes, actually. So, uh, Lois, if you go back to the, the channel and do a search you know, through our uh, our uh, you, uh, YouTube episodes, we have done sustrumming. I'd like to do sustrumming again. The problem with the sustrumming that we did was it was so um, fermented and decayed that it was like soup. So there weren't like big fillets of, of sustrumming. Um, so, so I was a little bit disappointed. We ended up having to dip our uh, our lefts, our bread into the into the, the juice and everything. But hey, what is going on? Uh, big Tony, good to see you. Welcome. I have not seen you since last night on uh, Reckless Eating's live stream. So welcome, Big Tony. Good to see you. Try eating fermented bean curds. Uh, John King, go to our, uh, our go to our YouTube episodes and do a search for natto. Um, all right, so I'm gonna read a card because we're gonna open up our, our non-alcoholic beverage first. So here's our card. Let me turn it the right way up so it looks like I'm actually reading from it. And our first trivia question is this. What is the oldest breakfast cereal still available in stores today? So don't get confused because uh, it's not the, the, the oldest um, breakfast cereal. It is the oldest breakfast cereal still available in stores today. So what is the oldest breakfast cereal still available in stores today? That goes in the back burner. We pretend to turn that down low. This isn't even a stove. That's okay. Yada, 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 blah, 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 blah. Um, well, uh, Sonic, you're saying, John, you eat all those things. We already did. So uh, well, most of the things that he's mentioning, we've already eaten. Again, it's hard to be very, it's hard to be original. I know that John likes to, likes to take eight things and put them together. Val, would you eat this with this, with this, with this, with this, with this, that you would normally not combine? Uh, but sometimes he comes up with these things and says, oh, eat bread in a can. It's like, we've done that. We, we ate brown bread, bread, bread out of a can. Uh, uh, eat, uh, you know, pork blood. Well, we've done that. So, um, so John, here's a suggestion. Like, before you throw these things out, do a search on, on, uh, on our YouTube channel and see if we've already done that. And then that way you don't even have to ask. So, um, Okay, people are guessing, hey, Philip Gerard just snuck into the room. You thought you could sneak into the room without me seeing you, but I saw you, Phil. Yes, I saw you. Caught you. We're just about ready to start, so you haven't missed a single thing. Although I keep yapping, and it's already 2 o'clock, and I've got, like, five snacks and two beverages to consume. So let us open our Fentimins Rose Lemonade, which is lemonade with, um, for the lack of a better term, rose water rose extract, rose petal extract. And Julie is not here to rate my pour, but that's okay. She, we don't rate soda pours anyways. I love that pink color. That's the roses. 
Um, we have, let's see, um, as far as consumption of roses go, I think we did a Valentine's Day episode maybe three or four years ago. We did a Valentine's Day episode where um, we, what did we, what did we do? We did a beef heart with strawberries, roses, and champagne dressing, I think it was. And so, yeah, we actually had rose petals that we ate the rose petals on the, on the heart. Cheers. Nice smell. Ooh. Wow. So I forgot, just looking at this, I forgot that this is a lemonade. But it re I mean, the, it, it has a really strong lemon flavor. I'm trying, the, the problem that I'm getting is there's a little bit of that rose flavor. It's, it's, a, it's a sweet, um, and it's almost like a, like a, it's hard to describe if you've never eaten rose petals, but it, it is like a, like, like you would think perfume would taste if you could eat perfume um, and it wasn't, and it didn't burn your mouth and taste nasty. Ah! Um, so, so it's, it's there and it's subtle, but the lemon, the lemon flavor, the lemonade is like really strong, but then, but then it's like, there's this other thing that's really sweet and, 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 and flowery, like almost like hibiscus. I mean, the combination taste almost tastes like hibiscus, the combination of the lemon and the roses together almost tastes like hibiscus. I gotta go for lunch. We're having burgers. I'll be back later, guys. Okay, Food Taster TV. We'll see you on the flip side. Thanks for joining us so far. Putting power. You're absolutely right. I forgot that we actually ate natto on the live stream. You're right. I for, I completely. I don't know why I forgot about that. You, you're right. We did. We ate natto on the live stream. But we also did an episode on not on natto. So it's there twice. But maybe when he was saying fermented. Fermented beans, you know, like maybe he wasn't thinking natto, you know, or maybe you know, the name might throw people off. Like drinking lemonade off the back of an old lady, or like like drinking uh, lemonade out of an old lady's uh, underwear drawer. Maybe that's what you know. <laughs> I'd say lingerie drawer, but then lingerie an old lady, you know, I don't know. Uh, welcome, Ryan. By the way, I'm gonna give that a thumbs up. But it's really intense. So um, I, I, I'm drinking. I was drinking and thinking soda in my mind, but it's so much more than soda. That lemon is is really really strong. It's not like fake lemon, like like in Sprite. The lemon is like really strong. The rose water almost it's it's almost like a sweet uh, floral kind of flavor and everything. So it's like whatever your mind is thinking this tastes completely different than that but a big thumbs up it's really good it's enjoyable uh like i said uh i, I it's very i don't want to say rich that's not that's not the the word for it but i can't see drinking a lot of this although it is very good and it's gonna get a big thumbs up for me so uh let's see val try eating butterfinger cake i have to make a butterfinger cake uh, that doesn't sound that bad. Uh, how bad could that be? A butterfinger cake. Hey, Amira, good to see you here. Amira, am I mistaken in thinking that that this is the first time that I've seen you in the live stream? Have you have you been in one of our live streams before? I don't remember. I, I know I, I see you a lot on um, Reckless Eating stream and everything, but I don't know if I've seen you um, before on our live stream. Uh, first time I'm catching it. That's what I thought. I thought, I, I, but uh, but welcome. Uh, good to see you here. Everybody, please give Amira Coleman a warm and hearty, trippy food welcome. Another first timer. Welcome, uh, Amira. Uh, make yourself comfortable and feel at home. Now, we, because, because we do have a couple of new people in the room, uh, I will just review really quickly our charter, uh, uh, for lack of a better term. So uh, essentially, um, we try to be family friendly here, not a family channel, uh, not, you know, but we try to be family friendly here. And the reason is because uh, you've actually seen some of the episodes where I've had my granddaughters here or my grand, my grandson, uh, DJ Dallas on here. Um, and I know that a lot of people like Rob Switch says his son, he watches uh, the, uh, the live stream with his son because he can, because we keep it um, PG, right? 
Uh, every once in a while, you can slip something in that it's, that's um, uh, double entendre, maybe, uh, and that's and that's okay. But uh, but we we try to keep it family friendly here, and then that way you can watch it with your fa your whole family, and you don't have to be embarrassed when they turn to you and go, "What does that mean, mom?" Um, the other thing is that we talk about food, we we talk about travel. Occasionally, we stray into other uh, other areas. But we try to keep it focused on food and travel. We only have two hours to cover that all. And so if we go off on a tangent on some other subject, it doesn't work so well. And if we talk about religion or politics, it turns into an argument. It always does. And so we're just not going to go there. So so as long as those are our ground rules, we don't talk about religion. We don't talk about uh, politics. Uh, we try to keep it focused on travel and food. Um, and we try to keep it family friendly. And those are the rules. So I have not had to ban anybody. I have not had to, um, I think maybe one time somebody posted something that I had, we had to take off and just say, hey, just repost that, just clean it up and, and put it on there. And and most people have been, I mean, honestly, we have a great community and I think most people are really good about that. So uh, I love my cereals. So does Cereal File. Where is Sam this week? We don't we don't have Sam this week. That's okay. Um, Let's see, did I miss anything? Always tell the mod to be good, snicker. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the mod knows. I, I At some point in time, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll put up a banner just to remind people and stuff. Um, we'll, 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 we should plan on doing some other stuff and expanding it so we can actually insert stuff in here and stuff. So we'll do that. Uh, I do have uh, like ODS software and everything. I should start using it. We'll do that. Sometime in the next month, we'll do that. Val, can you send me a t-shirt? Uh, which one do you want? Do you want my spam T-shirt? Do you want my uh, ball of twine T-shirt? Which one do you Which one do you want? Uh, when to drive 900 miles for a French dip or two? Uh, yeah. Um, what, what we'll have to do too? When you come down here, uh, Tom, we will have to do both Coles and um, uh, and Philippe's, and you can you can make your own decision. I feel oppressed because I can't draw. Asking naughty bits here. My day is ruined, and my disappointment is immeasurable. Well, Ryan, I hope that we can we can comfort you in your time of need. Uh, I'm so sorry to hear about that. I, everyone wants to know the breakfast cereal answer, Sonic. You're absolutely right. Let's see what some of the guesses were. The question was, what is the oldest breakfast cereal still available in stores today? So we have to go way back here, and um, <clears throat> there was Cheerios. Fro uh, Big Tony said Cheerios. Uh, Sonic Jeff said Frosted Flakes. Uh, John King said, "Kicks, kicks are old." By the way, most people don't realize that kicks are old. Uh, Philip Gerard said, "Cornflakes." Sonic Jet said, "Raisin Bran." Pudding Power said, "Caveman O's," which probably is accurate uh, if the, if cavemen ate break breakfast cereal. You can tell that Janice is at her party right now because otherwise she would have already looked that up and told you exactly who who invented it, when it was invented, when it was you know whatever. So uh, Tom said, "Frosted." Kumquat flakes, um, and and I don't expect anything less. Ryan Jones said, or maybe Raisin Bran. Sonic Jet said, Fruit Loops. Kellogg's made lots of cereals. Kellogg's does make lots of, and Kellogg's has been around for a long time. Pretty sure John was. Oh, okay, no, I'm sorry. It's not. Uh, I think those are those are for the guesses. Oh wait, so then Sonic comes and and he's 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 trying to hedge his bets. So he says, Apple Jacks, Frosted Flakes, Raisin Bran, Fruit Loops, Special K, Honey Nut Cheerios, Captain Crunch, just to name a few. I enjoy. Okay. He wasn't guessing. He was just saying those are what he enjoys. The correct answer is Kellogg's Corn Flakes from 1895. So Kellogg's Corn Flakes from 1895, still available today, is the oldest breakfast cereal still in the market. So that goes in the bottom of the deck or the middle of the deck, or you know, it doesn't really matter because I'm not even reading off that card. It doesn't matter. I would like a trippy food t-shirt. I would like a trippy food t-shirt too, but we, they don't exist, so... Philip, uh, okay, we, we're all caught up. All right, so uh, let us go ahead and open up our first snack. Um, I think I'm going to start with the orange almonds. So these are, again, Almond Brothers orange almonds with cayenne pepper. And when I eat stuff with cayenne pepper, sometimes I feel like I've been tied to the whipping post. Almond Brothers, that's it. It's a joke. Oh, got to read a card. Sorry about that. Almost got there. What is Honio? The question is, what is Honio? Uh, it's spelled H-O-N-G-E-O. -E what is Honio? Back burner, you know, you know the drill. Almonds. These look like the, um, what they call burnt peanuts, the French burnt peanuts. Can you guys see that? Or is that like all, 
I gotta find that sweet spot where it's in focus. Maybe I have to cover my face. That's what it is. There we go. They're coated. They're very sweet. I guess that's the orange rind. Those are good. Those have real, real strong orange flavor, but there's more flavor in the rind than there is in the orange itself. Habanero is more subtle though. Not a lot of heat here. Love the orange taste though. These are really, really good. The thumbs are way up. Those are really, really nice. So, again, you know where I got all this stuff. Cost Plus World Market. Highly recommend these. Awesome. Okay. That was a thumbs up. So, let's go back to our question. Our question was, what is Honyo? And the answers were, mm, I'm not going to read that out loud. Uh, it's a juice that makes your kumquat. Uh, now you get a big red soda in LA. You know, we have big red soda in LA. It's a, it's kind of international. Costco. Uh, Hanyo is not Costco or cost plus cost plus, uh, cost plus world market. Sonic. Um, looks like nobody guessed at this one. What is Hanyo? So I will tell you, Hanyo is fermented skate. It's from Korea. It's fermented skate. Um, if you really want to see what Hanyo is, we, we actually did an episode on it. I think. I want to say it was with uh, Q the Critic, with uh, with our friend Quincy, and uh, we ate Hanyo. And um, I'm just going to leave it there, and we'll let you look it up. H O N G E O. Uh, go back. It's a trippy food episode. Uh, go back and look that look that up because that is a fun episode to watch. A fun episode to watch. There we go. Back back burner. I mean, no wait, it's not back burner. In the deck. Yada yada yada. Blah blah blah. Okay. So. It is time to open up our second snack. How are we doing on time? We're doing great on time. It's 2.12. I think we're going to be able to get to everything else in time. So we're good. We're pacing ourselves, but we're good. Um, I take that back because it got really quiet in the chat, and I don't trust the uh, network connection. So everybody just pop something in there. Just let me know you're there. In the meantime, we'll get ready for our second snack. Anybody? Somebody? Just throw something up there. I feel like I'm talking to myself. It, it's extremely possible. Hey, there we go. Kumquat <laughs> M&Ms. That would actually be good, I think. Kumquat M&Ms. You want to do it, yeah, maybe like uh, M&Ms with a little piece of kumquat inside it as opposed to, like, we're not, you wouldn't use the peanut one. Um, I just like the M&Ms chocolate, the flavor there, chocolate. But, you know, a, a piece of kumquat inside it, that would, that would really kick it up a bit. I think that would be good. Um, wish you would review a good Italian pie. You, you, uh, you mean on the live stream or you make a trippy food episode? Uh, because the reason I say that, Sonic, is is go back and let's see. How many pizza ones have we done? Well, we made a pizza, uh, Thanksgiving pizza, a couple of years back. Um, we did do um, Frank Pepe's in um, in New Haven, Connecticut. So go go back and look at our Frank Pepe episode. Let me know if that satisfies your, your request for a good Italian pie episode. Frank Pepe, P-E-P-E, uh, -P -E, Frank Pepe, uh, the trippy food episode that we did. And if not, we'll do another one. We'll do something else. Because you, you'll never stop me from eating good, the good pizza. So I missed that last question. I'm making beef marrow and bone broth for my female that had pups. Oh, your female. Okay. So you say your female. I'm like, is that what you call your wife? Uh, no, your female puppy, your female dog, your yeah, your 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 dog. Um, let's see. Sorry, I missed that last question. You're talking about what is the Honio one? Oh, you mean you, you missed answering the question? That's okay. Uh, you didn't miss too much. Sucking the marrow is the best part. Tell me about it. Um, all right. So, question before we open up our next snack: uh, What plant can only the leaves of young plants be safely eaten? after boiling two or more times with the water drained and replaced each time. 
you know, it's a lot to take in, but uh, what plant can, uh, can only the leaves of the young plants be safely eaten after boiling two or more times with the water drained and replaced each time? What is that plant? So that goes in the back burner uh, and we'll turn the, uh, the, the water up so that we can boil it and drain it two times. And we are gonna open up our Lily Q's hot pepper vinegar kettle chips. Uh, hot pepper vinegar, you know what? Why did I not see hot pepper in the ingredients? Why, why is that? It says the ingredients, potatoes, sunflower, canola oil, apple cider vinegar powder, food starch, modified salt, spice, garlic powder. Maybe it's spice. Maybe spice is it. All right, that means I got to open it from the bottom. Oh, I just tore that apart. The smell of vinegar. Here, let me put that down into the muzzle and you can see the chips yourself. There they go. They look like cutting chips, right? The other Colorado leaves. Hmm. They've got a nice crunch. They're not greasy. Just the right amount of salt. Because you don't want to do vinegar without salt, right? Where's the hot pepper? Maybe they just wrote hot pepper on there and there's no hot pepper in it. I always wonder, my door is painted white like my room. Well, I see a red door and I want to paint it black. No colors anymore. I want them to turn black. How does strong vinegar smell? It doesn't have a lot of strong vinegar taste. Even the vinegar is subtle, which is really weird for some for a chips that say to advertise vinegar for that to be subtle like that. I like the texture. I like the crunch of the chips. I like that they have just the right amount. So they're not too salty, but you can taste that the salt is there. There's just a tiny, 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 tiny burn from hot pepper. Yes, John, Rolling Stones. These are gonna get a thumbs in the middle. These are a good bag of chips. That's all they are, it's a good bag of chips. Nope, that much hot pepper, that much vinegar, but it says hot pepper vinegar, kettle chips. They're good, they really are, they're good chips. I could eat this whole bag, they're good chips. There's a tiny residual burn, and you get some, the vinegar smell when you open that bag, but the flavor, I'm like, where is it? So yeah, kind of disappointed, but if, if, I'm not gonna get a thumbs down because it's good. It's gonna get a thumbs in the middle. It doesn't deliver on what it's supposed to be. So, um, yeah, I'm in the middle on that one. So don't run out and get, uh, I will tell you this. If you are at a cost plus world market and you decide you want to get ch some chips, well, two things. One, they do have those, um, Philip, remind me, if you're still there, remind me what those chips, those pretzels were that I ate with um, with Philip, or, uh, the younger, Philip the younger. Um, those uh, uni unique, I think it was called, unique pretzels. They do have them at Cost Plus World Market. Those are really good. But as far as chips go, they don't. They have the Keo brands, K E O, K E O G H, I think it is. They're from Ireland. They have different bunch of different uh, flavors. They have one called Flame Grilled Irish Steak that actually has beef powder in it. It is amazing, and they do have that at Cost Plus World Market. So the trick is finding it there. It's not there all the time. The trick is finding it there. But, but if you can find it there, I highly recommend it. It is just amazing, amazing. Probably, probably my favorite chip, my favorite chip any, any time. Because it is a meaty chip, that's why. Uh, 
then I'll just let you know my whole world is painted black. I don't want to see the sun blotted out from the sky. Uh, Val, would you volunteer to be Britney Spears' new conservator? No, why would I? Why, I have no experience being a conservator. No, of course not. I would not do that. Let uh, let somebody um, qualified be Britney Spears' new conservator, or 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 let Britney Spears not have a conservator. Let her just let, lead her, lead her life. Um, all right. So we did. Uh, we said we were going to do snacks, and then we're going to open up our alcoholic beverage. And let's go ahead and do that right now. And our alcoholic beverage today. I, I I do like the idea that somebody mentioned wine, but we didn't have to stop there. Maybe we could do a tequila, or maybe we could do you know. Uh, something like something along those lines. We're not going to do Night Train. We're not going to do uh, Richard's Wild Irish Rose. We're not going to do uh, Mad Dog 2020. We're not going to do that. Um, we might do a seltzer, but we're going to do a we're going to do a good seltzer. I don't I don't want to have to suffer through a you know crappy beverage. You know just oh you might enter, you might enjoy it, but you know but then I w I don't have to drink the whole thing. It's not like I'm gonna I'm gonna chug it. Um, so. I'd rather in, I'd rather enjoy something and just give you something interesting and unique. So um, we did ask a question, and that question was, what plant can only the leaves of young plants be safely eaten after boiling two or more times with the water drained and replaced each time? Amazing that it could fit that all in this card, uh, but you know, that is it. Uh, let's see, what were the answers? Uh, Sonic Jet said watercress. Uh, Tom said kumquat leaves. Uh, yes, deadly if you're not careful, uh, especially if, like you're eating them on a mountaintop. Why is your door? Oh, okay. No. Um, let's see. That was it. That was the only guess was watercress. The correct answer is poke weed or poke salad. Uh, like it sounds like poke salad, but salad is what they call it in the in the south. Poke salad or poke weed. Um, so I don't know if you guys remember the song Poke Salad Annie. It's something that they eat primarily in the South. We've talked about it on the show before, poke salad. Uh, I had the opportunity to eat it in uh, rural Alabama um, several times and because I knew somebody who knew how to cook it, and they told me what to look for. So I went out and they said, uh, if you go out and pick it, we will make it for you. Uh, only take the small green leaves. Do not take any other part of the plant and um, come back, and we'll make it for you. And they did. And so, um, uh, But it's one of those things that can be like it can kill you. It's, it can be really, really toxic if it's not made the right way. So that's what that that is the answer to our question. Uh, so that goes back in the deck, and uh, we are going to open up our alcoholic beverage or our beer. And uh, so um, I will go ahead and ask the question first before I forget. So the question, the beer question is, what is the common name for guanabana? Again, the question is, what is the common name for guanabana? That goes back here on whatever burner it fits on. And we are going to open up our Allagash. Curieu, curieu. Does anybody speak Belgian out there? Is anybody like speak Belgian who knows what the, how to pronounce that? Curieu, cur I, I I don't know how to pronounce that. Allagash, curieu, Belgian style golden ale, aged in bourbon barrels, brewed and bottled in Portland, Maine, and 10.2 percent ABV. So we have Richard Simmons. Because we're, we're going to save the bottle cap. And now, if you tell me, like, I'm into trying local beers, and this is local to Portland, Maine. I did not realize that there was a beer local to Portland, Maine, and now I know. We at, at, at Allagash is local to Portland, Maine. It, ha, it definitely has a weedy, wheat, not like Wheaties. No, I guess maybe exactly like Wheaties. A wheaty type of a, a, a smell. Smell to it. it. Doesn't it? Doesn't have that that skunkiness that a like domestic beer has. We're going to use our bubbly glass, our, our little beer tornado glass. Uh, sorry, Julie, you are not here to, to rate this, but you know we, you can do it after the fact and then leave a comment and tell me what you think of the pour. And again, uh, it's hard on this glass doing it with this glass because this glass generates a lot of bubbles and it generates a large head even if we don't pour a large head on it. So. And this is definitely a sipping drink because it's 10%. That doesn't sound like a lot, but you know, me, I'm a lightweight. Look at that, the storm has started. I might just do that. Look at that, I didn't do that. 
It's still growing. I wish I had something I could. Like the, the head is still rising. Maybe that was a mistake. I can't even drink this. Let me bail this out. At least some of it. And then I'll just drink it off the plate afterwards. I'm just going to get a face full of suds. That's why I'm doing this. Too bad I can't do something like this. Put it on ice cream or something. I imagine that just sitting here, this is going to liquefy. That's probably good enough. Make sure it's somewhere where Doodle can't get it. What I miss? Uh, hello, Trippy. Hey, Jesse Torres in the room. Welcome, Jesse. Good to see you again. Are you not going to try puckers? Puckers? Is that like smuckers? Uh, uh, am I not going? You're not going to try puckers. I'm not sure what that means. Did we talk about something called puckers that I said I'm not going to try? Licorice jelly, like licorice jelly beans. Uh, Val, I tried the chorizo and chipotle fritos. They were horrible. Am I missing something that you don't remember how it tasted? No, I thought those were really, really good. Who did I? Somebody was here. I think it was uh, Lindsay. Lindsay was here, and I had the bag, and I said, I said, hey, do you want to do you want to take these home? And she did. So I don't know. Ask Lindsay what she thought of it. I liked them. Uh, I really did. So I don't, you know, I don't know, Jesse. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know. All right. Anyways, here is our alcoholic beverage, our beer, our uh, Belgian beer. Puckers is a flavored alcohol. Well, I, I don't know, Tom. I'll, I'll look into it. I, this is the first time I, I – I don't know if we talked about it, and I forgot that we talked about it or something. But, um, yeah, um, yeah, I'll, I'll check it out. Why not? What, do you make it in a still, though? Or can you get it at a liquor store? It tasted very fragrant and slightly stale. Is that how you remember them? No. Um, I don't remember it being fragrant. The thing is, it to me, it had a meaty taste to it, which I really liked. It was, it was almost like uh, like if you're going to use it to make a Frito pie, which has chili in it, it almost has that, that flavor already in it. That, that's what I got from it. This is really weird because it is a 10.0 or 10.2, but it doesn't taste like it has a lot of alcohol on it. It's very mild. The flavors are very mild too. So it doesn't have, it's, it's not crisp. It's not uh, bitter. It's not sour. It's not, um, it's just, it's, it, it has a very, very mellow sweet. Uh, not, no, it's not sweet. It's not even sweet. It just has a mellow, um, a mellow beer taste. It's like if you extracted beer down to its basic form, um, but not like a domestic beer like like Budweiser or Schlitz or you know Miller or anything like that. Um, it's a nice it's a nice sipping beer. It's a nice like I would imagine like ice cold on a hot day. This would be really really refreshing. It smelled like armpits. I'll give you that one, Jesse. It probably did smell like armpits. This is good. That's a thumbs up. That's a thumbs up right there. Jesse, I'm gonna. I'm going to have to revisit that. It's been a while since I actually had them. And again, um, so I think when, when I when I did the Frito pie with the trips from Canada, I had the bag handy just so that I could show them the bag. But I didn't want to use that because uh, they don't have access to it in Canada. Um, but I had it handy. And I think that's why I ended up sending it home with, um, with Lindsay when she was over. Um, but I haven't had it in a while. So I think I'm going to – Jesse, I think – I know this little convenience store that has it, and I'm going to have to go back and revisit that, and I'll and I'll see. So remind me, I'm going to go get it this week. Remind me next week to maybe maybe we'll just do it. Maybe we'll just do it on the channel. We'll just do it on the live stream next week, so that so that you can experience my um, my experience. Because I don't think we've ever. I want to say we did do it on the live channel though. I want I, I want to say we have done it on the live stream in the past. I'm, I'm pretty sure we have. I'm going to have to go back and look at the live stream. If I already did it on the live stream, I will go back and review that. If not, I'll get some, and we'll do it on the live stream next week. How about that? I'm I, I'm sorry that you had a bad experience with it. Uh, let's see. The question was, what is the common name for Guaramada? And 
Tom, Tom was the only one that, oh, maybe that's what uh, John King was answering, licorice jelly. Maybe that was the answer to his question. He thinks what I would not is licorice jelly. That's okay. That's a good guess. Uh, Tom said kumquat, as he, as I would not expect him to say anything but kumquat. Uh, I really feel bad for him because I think sometimes he probably knows the real answer to that, but he says kumquat because it's, it, 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 it's funnier. So um, uh, I, I almost want to say he's always right. Uh, that looks like the only guesses. Uh, the correct common name for guanamana is soursop. So soursop is a uh, um, it's a fruit from the Caribbean. Uh, the guanamana is the name for that fruit in Colombia. It is supposed to have anti-cancer properties. That's what they say. It has anti-cancer properties, but who really knows? Um, in Colombia, they use it. They use it to flavor some stuff, but primarily it's used for making shakes, so or or, or drinks. So um, you can have it two ways. Um, so they will either make it with water, uh, so it's mixed with water, or you, or they will mix it with um, with milk, uh, and you know and make a shake from it. Uh, but the best way to have it is is half water, half milk, which they call miti miti. So we should have done it for our Colombian show. We did not, but that's the common name for guanabana. Guanabana is the Colombian name for a fruit that we call soursop. I uh, found a spot that sells them. I don't know. I just got a bad batch. Yes, I believe it was live streamed. Guess my go-to is still hot flaming free. Uh, when you say hot flaming, you mean flaming hot, flaming hot. The thing about flaming hot is I don't like things that are flaming hot. And, and it's like that Cheeto flaming hot. I don't like flaming hot because to me, flaming hot is uh, it has a very chemical taste. It has a chemical heat to it that I that I don't like. So I don't like things that are that are flaming hot with that chemical heat. Um, I, I, I don't think I've had the, the Flamin' Hot Fritos, though. I will have to give those a shot. But, um, but yeah, I think um, I'll check to see what we said in the live stream. But, you know, maybe for fun, I'll just get them again anyways. So, uh, anyways, this card well, goes in the back. It goes in, sorry, in the deck. We put that in the back of the deck. 10.2 goes, goes in the back of the deck. And uh, we will choose another question shortly. Now. I can't remember who suggested this. Maybe it was John, but we're going to go ahead and do it. So last week, because we were doing Colombian uh, Colombian food, we did uh, we combined the um, Aguila beer and the uh, the um, Colombiana soda because that's what they do in Colombia to make a drink called Rafajo. They don't do that with this, but we're going to do it anyways. So I am going to take, let's see, what did we do with our rose lemonade? I'm not going to do a lot of this because I just don't want to waste it. And a little of this. So this is a, con a combination of Fentonman's Rose Lemonade and our um, Allagash Brewing Curio. However you pronounce that. Cheers. That's not good. That is not good whatsoever. There's nothing good about this at all. That for some reason brings out the alcohol flavor. The, that rose flavor, it, it, it tastes it tastes like they're trying to hide something in here. The, the, uh, the lemon disappears. That's kind of going to big thumbs down for me. It's terrible. It's terrible. I regret doing it, and I just did it. Uh, let's see. I uh, agree about Flaming Hot flavors, but I believe the Flaming Hot Fritos stand on their own. I will check that out. I will definitely check that out because I know that I haven't had Flaming Hot Fritos. Where's Doodle? No, oh, that's odd. Okay. I should probably should not have drank that that fast because now I feel lightheaded. I don't know if you guys are aware of it or not, but I'm a very I'm a lightweight when it comes to alcohol, and so you may you may see me slurring my words. I'm getting a little tipsy just on this 10.2 um, beer, but um, you know always something different for the channel. So we did that. We're going to start with our uh, our remaining snacks. We have three left. It's 2:34. We have plenty of time, I think. We will do the bacon first. So the bacon is again it is bacon on the go, uh, amped up Riff's Smokehouse meats and sauces. Uh, habanero heat seasoned bacon. That's a lot. That's a lot to take in. A lot of words on that package. And again, um, Riff's Smokehouse is in Arden Hills, Minnesota. 
So it says peel down. That makes life easy. Oh, card. What's with you guys are supposed to keep me honest? No card. All right, let's let's see. Let's read another card. So the question, if I turn this right side up, uh, <clears throat> the question is, what food contains tetrodotoxin, which can be deadly in small amounts? Again, the, the question is, what food contains text tetrodotoxin, which can be deadly in small amounts? Back burner, turn it down, yada, yada, blah, blah, blah. Let me get rid of those other questions so I don't ask them again. And let's dig into our bacon. Ooh, it has a really nice smoky smell. Nothing worse than limp bacon. It's not crispy, but it's a little bit crunchy. No habanero. I don't know what happened to the habanero. Okay. A little bit of heat coming in on the, on the, on the inside. But it's slow. And it's not hot. It's tasty. It really is. Um, I like the... Um, broth sauce whatever you want to call it it is really tiny the uh the text but i'm going to read it anyways because i'm curious now the ingredients are uh bacon cured with water sugar salt sodium phosphate sodium erythrobate uh, sodium nitrate dark brown sugar salt sugar habanero and spices so habanero they didn't put enough habanero in here there's a little bit of a tiny little burn that comes in at the end of it, but it's not enough to, to warrant putting habanero heat on the label. So that's going to get a thumbs in the middle for me. It doesn't deliver on their promise. It's good. It doesn't deliver on their promise. It's just not not enough of a, of a uh, there's no habanero heat to it. There's a tiny little bit of habanero, uh, habanero flavor, but it's just not, it's not enough to, it's not enough to call it habanero heat. So that's the thumbs in the middle. So let's see. Uh, we asked a question. The question was, uh, what food contains tetrodotoxin, which can be deadly in small amounts? The answers were uh, Cablin, who snuck in the room, who I didn't realize was in the room, was Cablin, who said the puffer fish, John King, who said shark. Now, John, I'm assuming you mean Greenland shark, which is what they eat in Iceland, which is poisonous if you don't ferment, allow it to ferment. So it has the uric acid in the, in the Greenland shark. It has the uric acid, and they allow it to ferment, which makes it edible. And you can't eat it, you know, can't eat it raw like that um, because it, it is toxic. So that is a good guess, shark. And I said, think I think that's what you mean. And uh, Tom says puffer quats, which which is um, um, like I'm not even sure. Like my imagination isn't is, isn't um, isn't qualified to 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 picture what that actually is. Uh, Kay Blinn, I'm going to go ahead and say you are correct. So uh, the puffer fish or the blowfish, as some people call it, uh, the dish itself is called fugu. So uh, fugu, it has this uh, neurotoxin in it that if it's made incorrectly, um, you have to go through rigorous training and you have to be certified in order to serve it. Because the thing is, uh, most of the toxin is, is um, concentrated in the liver. And if you just get a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of that, um, you you have about 20 minutes to live. And so eventually what it does is it, it, it causes total paralysis, all your organs shut down, total paralysis, and you die probably within about 20 minutes and there's no known antidote for it. So um, it's always a fun thing to eat, fugu. Uh, but um, so Cablin, I'm gonna say that you are absolutely correct. It is the puffer fish and you win and puffer quats is, sounds funnier, uh, but apparently it's not, that's not the correct answer. Um, but it's a good answer. Uh, so that goes into the deck. Uh, let's see. We did the bacon. We have two more snacks to do. Are we doing on time? We're doing okay on time. we got 20 minutes left. I think we can do this. Um, so we have our sardine pate. 
our uh, Briosa Gourmet Sardine Pate and our Woodward Ave Chicken Spread. I think we're going to do Chicken Spread next, only because I think the Sardine Pate is going to have more flavor, and I think the uh, the Chicken Spread is going to be a little bit more mellow. So this I just found fascinating from the standpoint of I've never really seen a chicken spread, like a like a uh, the equivalent of a chicken pate. I'm guessing it doesn't have livers in it, although it might. Let's see. Let's see what the ingredients of this one are. Mechanically separated chicken, which is like a chicken nugget, sunflower oil, water, sodium caseinate, salt, cornstarch, onion powder, sugar, spices, monosodium glutamate, contains milk. I don't see milk as the ingredient, but it says that. It says milk. Maybe the sodium caseinate comes from milk. It does. Sodium caseinate comes from milk. So that's what's in here. So it should be interesting, I think. I've never had chicken in this form before. Jesus loves you too, Josh Gruber. But he doesn't love everybody. He said, I don't think he does. And welcome, Josh Gruber, to the room. Josh Gruber, are you related to Hans Gruber, the international terrorist from Die Hard? That top doesn't want to come off. All right, you know, that's fine. We'll do that. It almost has, it almost has that um, that kind of um, spam smell of it, but it doesn't look like spam at all. I mean, look at that. What does that look like to you? All right, so um, here's what we're going to do. We're going to open up a box of crackers, and again. I'm not going to make a big deal out of this. This is Private Selection Classic Water Cruise Crackers, which is the equivalent of the Cars Water Crackers from the UK, I think. Um, but it's just a uh, it's just a um, neutral palette on which to enjoy We did not ask it. We did not ask a question. Hang on. We did not ask a question. How do you guys let me get away with this stuff? But we'll ask a question, and then we will eat this. Our question is, what is the famous alcoholic beverage made famous in Dawson City, Yukon? Again, the question, what is the famous alcoholic beverage made famous in Dawson City, Yukon? Back burner, down low. Our Canadians may be able to answer this. I'm on the highway to hell. Hi, folks in Trippy Food. I'm back. What I miss? Uh, you missed... Uh, I, I don't know what, when you left. I don't remember when you left. So you might have missed us e eating uh, our snacks and opening up our alcoholic beverage. You may have missed that. We'll have to do some sort of uh, recovery. Val, try eating chocolate monkey brains. John, I, I promise you, if you can tell me where in the United States I can buy monkey brains, I will eat chocolate-covered monkey brains. So you let me know where I can buy, where I can get monkey brains in the U.S., and I'll be happy to do that for you. I'm not doing it until you tell me where I can get uh, monkey brains. Here is our water cracker, is what they call it. Water cracker? Yes, water cr water cr cracker. Crapper? Oh my God! I thought this was going to be solid. It's like it's 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 like semi liquid. That's odd. Was not expecting that. There we go. Cheers. Did you try proper 12 whiskey? I didn't know about 12, proper 12 whiskey, but since today we decided that we're not necessarily focused on trippy food beer night, but we will do whatever alcoholic beverage we feel like, we could do proper 12 whiskey. We could do Coors Banquet too, John. You miss what Val is scared of the most. I miss what Val is scared, the scared of the most. This is odd. It tastes like chicken soup. It tastes like a thick chicken soup. Almost like a tortilla soup without the tortillas. It's bizarre. Give me another one. It doesn't taste like... I mean, it tastes like chicken. It tastes like somebody put chicken in a blender without the skin. That is bizarre. And it's pink. What is up with this? 
it's almost liquid. Do you know McGregor? No. Do you know the Muffin Man? The Muffin Man. The Muffin Man? Do you know the Muffin Man who lives on Drury Lane? I don't know what's a good application for this. It doesn't taste bad at all. It's very, very strange. It tastes familiar. I can't quite place it. I don't know how you, I don't know how you would eat this. I don't know. It's really bizarre. But definitely it definitely has a strong flavor of chicken. But it's not a texture that's familiar at all. It's almost like a liquid. And I'm figuring I'm, I'm trying to ask myself how you would you know it's it, it's almost like it almost tastes like it needs to be a little more solid and, and, and a little less liquid and it would be a good substitute for like a tuna salad sandwich. So maybe like a spread on bread, maybe with a little bit of mayo, maybe some lettuce and tomato or something. That might be really nice. Other than that, it's not like something I would put on. I, I put it on a cracker, but it's not something I would put on a cracker or anything. A little bit odd. I'm going to give it a thumbs up because it's not it's not pretending to be anything that it's not. It's just, for me, it's just really odd. So, um, yeah, thumbs up for me because it has good flavor, but um, still trying to figure it out. Still have not figured it out. You are the Muffin Man. I do not live on Droid Lane, though. So I'm not that. I'm not the Muffin Man. Ah. All right. So um, we did ask a question. And the question was, what is the famous alcoholic beverage made, made famous in Dawson City, Yukon? And the answers were, um, maybe Coors Banquet was an answer to that question. Maybe McGregor Whiskey was an answer to that question. And those seem to be the only answers to those questions. Well, the correct answer is, in fact, the Sour Toe Cocktail. Now, you may have heard of the Sour Toe. Uh, that beer really is strong. You may have heard of the Sour Toe Cocktail. Because the Sour Toe Cocktail is a drink. I believe it's whiskey. And in the glass, when you drink it, uh, there is a human toe. A, a real human toe. And uh, you have to allow the human toe to touch your lips while you're drinking the sour toe cocktail. Um, the question is, is where are people getting sour toes? They're being donated. Typically, uh, because it's up in the Yukon, it's from frostbite victims. So they lose their toes due to frostbite or they have their toes cut off because of frostbite. And those usually end up going into the sour toe cocktail. So it is actually a real human toe that goes in the sour toe cocktail. Now, um, they do charge you a very, very large amount of money if you swallow that toe. And I say that, and I, I know it sounds strange, uh, like you would think, like, what if I accidentally swallowed it or anything? No, there are people who have swallowed it on purpose, and it's like thousands of dollars that you have to pay. It, because the thing is, it's not like you can just go to the toe store at the mall and get a new toe for, these, uh, for your sour toe cocktail. But apparently it was a thing. And uh, it's always been a thing in Dawson City, Yukon, and it's a big challenge in Dawson City, Yukon. I think they think I think they say like total, um, you know, you have to pay for the drink and everything. But I think they I think they say total cost maybe twenty bucks or something to try the uh, tower, sour toe cocktail. Just don't eat the toe because it's going to cost you a lot of money. Uh, yeah, that's a thing in Dawson City, Yukon, and it, it sounds like it's made up, but it's actually a real thing. Uh, let's see, no or. Oh, yes. Yes, Lois, I am the Muffin Man because I don't. Uh, John, remember my thing about uh, keeping it a family friendly channel? You just blew it. So I don't have a. Um, hang on a second. Let's see if I can do this. Okay, so John, that message has been, has been deleted. If you want to restate that in a family friendly way, you are welcome to do so. All right, uh, so we have uh, we have one snack left, which is our sardine pate. Let me go and put this aside. Uh, again, this is Briosa Gourmet Sardine Pate. It is a product of Portugal, and it is distributed by, uh, produced by Conservas Porto Portugal Norte. Um, but it, it is distributed by um, Tin Can Fish in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Time for questioning. 
Sorry, Val, I have been drinking tequila. I'm sorry, you've been drinking tequila as well. All right, so uh, we're gonna ask a question. The question is, uh, how is the drink kumis made? That's K-U-M-I-S. How is the drink kumis made? Uh, so that goes on the back burner. We're gonna call it the black back burner. It's, it goes on top of my laptop. Uh, there are no uh, stove controls or any knob, knobs or anything. So it just sits there and we pretend it's like a stove. It's just this one of running joke that we do. And let's go ahead and open up our sardine pate. Again, our sardine pate con contains sardines, olive oil, margarine. That's bizarre. The margarine part is bizarre. Uh, margarine, uh, emulsifiers, water, salt, um, whey powder, milk, uh, potassium sorbate, citric acid, and uh, artificial flavoring, tomato paste, vinegar, spices, and salt. Actually, sounds good. So let's uh, let's check this out. <clears throat> they put the little sticker on the bottom that uh, hides the place where you would open it. A nondescript can. So if you took this label off and gave this to somebody, it could be anything. You might want to do that for somebody who doesn't like sardines. I think that would include Matt Zion, who does not like sardines. Ooh, that's weird. You guys, you guys all know what what it looks like when you open up a can of sardines, right? This is sard, sard, sardine pate. That's weird. It's kind of got, got a reddish color. I'm guessing that's the tomato paste that gives it that reddish color. It doesn't. Typically, sardines have a very strong taste. When you open up a can of sardines, you get that initial blast of sardine, with that whiff of sardines. This doesn't have that. It's there. It's just really subtle. You can smell it. You know that it, it's sardines from the smell. So we're going to actually go back to our water crackers. And we're going to put that on water crackers. Did Janice just pop in? Janice did pop back in. Janice could have used you a few minutes ago, but it's okay. We got it under control. Ooh, so I so the thing is is like I went to do that to spread it and then like the liquid starts popping up from from the sides. Let's try this. Looks like cat food. I mean, doesn't it look like cat food? It doesn't have the texture of sardines, but again, it's, it's a pate. I don't think it's supposed to. It definitely has the flavor of sardines, but it's not as fishy. Wow. The flavor grows, though. So the more you, long you eat it, the stronger that flavor gets. It's not really salty. That's interesting. You get those other flavors in there. And then, as you get towards the end, the sardine flavor really kicks in. I'm going to try one more. Here we go. So, Janice, you just got home, so you are going to join us for the next... You will be with us for the next seven minutes. Welcome back. I hope you had enjoyed your party. Now, I like sardines. If you don't like the flavor of sardines, I mean, eating sardines out of a can, if that's really strong for you, you might not like this. But this is a much mellow, mellower form. The thing is, as you eat it, that, that sardine flavor does come in towards the end. So, like I said, if you don't like the flavor of sardines, you're probably not going to like this. I actually do like this. It totally changes the sardine experience. So, uh, again, uh, it doesn't have the it doesn't have the texture of the the, the sardine fillets, the the you know the texture of the meat of the sardine, because this is blended. Um, it also you can taste the tomato in it. You can taste the garlic, the salt, the other things in it. It's really nice. I don't know that I would just serve this as a pate. It has to be like a unique, 
kind of, um, I'm wondering, and this is just off the cuff, I'm just wondering if you get those mini um, bell peppers, I would, I wonder what it would taste like if you stuffed a mini bell pepper with this and roasted it inside it, sort of like a stuffed pepper, but stuffed with this pate, maybe make, maybe mix with rice or something, I'm not sure, but uh, I'm just curious how, what that would taste like. I'm, I'm, I'm betting it would be good. Yeah, I'm going to give it a thumbs up. And again, I like sardines. If you don't, don't like sardines, you might not like it. I'm going to not sip from the, the, the beer right now because it's a 10.2, and I already feel lightheaded from it. I don't know if you guys noticed or not. Have you noticed it or not? Have you noticed a difference in my demeanor or a difference in my uh, speech patterns based on the fact that I'm drinking this 10.2 um, beer? Have you noticed a difference? Let me know. It was nice to see some family members. I'm still on my phone watching, so typing is not fun. Well, we know you're there, and that's the important thing. That's weird. The question was, how is the drink kumis made? Uh, let's see. Um, what were the answers? The answers were, uh, Janice said fermented donkey milk. John King said deregulation of kumquat. Now, uh, John, I think that's Tom's job. Uh, let's see. Mm, were there anything else? You guys are you guys are really quiet on answering questions today. That's okay. Yes, you are very rude and offensive now. Oh, I I don't know whether to take you seriously or not. I might be, and 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 maybe the alcohol talking. So I, I apologize if I am uh, rude and offensive. So uh, screw you, Los. No, I'm kidding. Um, Anyways, the question was, how is the drink kumis made? And um, I think um, it is not the deregulation of kumquat, although that's a great answer, and I wish Tom had said that. Um, and Janice had fermented don donkey milk, and she's relatively close. It is fermented mare's milk, uh, not necessarily donkey, usually horse. So it, uh, a, female ho a mare is a female horse. It is fermented uh, uh, horse milk, and uh, it is made in um, countries that... Th uh, in and around Mongolia. And the reason they make a beverage like this is it's very, very similar to like dough, which we had, uh, I don't know which, which show that was, we did we did dough, which is the um, fermented uh, yogurt drink. It's very, very similar to that. Um, but the reason they, they drink stuff like that is because there's not a lot of uh, fruits and vegetables in Mongolia. And so their diet is, is uh, there's a lot of cheeses, uh, there's a lot of dairy, um, there, I think there might be some eggs. It's mostly meat, and they do supplement that with uh, the uh, mare's milk, the horse milk. Um, uh, at some point in time, they let it uh, ferment to the point where it becomes alcoholic. So there is a certain amount. Of, it's a low amount, but there's some some alcohol in the fermented mare's, mare's milk as well. I have actually tried it before. I went to a Mongolian food festival in in Los Angeles that was at City Hall, and uh, they had some fermented mare's milk, which I I did try. Um, and it did taste very similar to dough. I don't remember how much alcohol was in it, or it was an alcoholic beverage, but uh, but yeah, that's what uh, kumis is. It is a uh, fermented mare's milk drink uh, that they drink in in and around Mongolia. So that is the uh, question that goes in the middle of the deck. I think we got to all our snacks. We did get to all our snacks, which is good because it's 2:58. Uh, sorry, I missed that question. We'll give you my answer to the next question now. Come quat tea. Um, well, we weren't going to ask another question, but we can. And let's, let's ask another question and see if the answer is kumquat tea. So I will ask one more question. We're going to put everything together like we typically do. We might go a little bit over th two hours. I hope that's okay with you guys. Now, I'm sorry I got out of line there. We, we fixed it, John. Um, you are just as chill and cool as ever. Okay. I'm not cool, actually. I'm actually pretty warm. It's about, it's in the 80s. I have the fan, the ups, the upper, the upper fan on and the lower fan on, and I'm still like sweating a little bit. But it could be the alcoholic beverage as well. Uh, so, so um, Tom, I will ask the, I will ask another question just for you, so that you can answer the question, and then everybody else can throw it out as well. So the question is, uh, let's see, we asked that, we asked that, we asked. That. Oh, okay. What was the original name of Dunkin' Donuts? The question, once again, what is the original name of Dunkin' Donuts? And Tom, we know that the answer is kumquat tea. <clears throat> so that goes in the back, and we're going to assemble ourselves a snack based on everything that we ate today. So 
got our water cracker. So it'll go in the bottom. I'm going to do this on a plate. Otherwise, I, I foresee disaster. So here is our um, sardine pate. Bizarre stuff this is. I like it, but it's bizarre. I'm not going to lie. Our sardine pate. Maybe we'll make this like a sandwich. Because I have our... Um, we get another cracker. I'll put this cracker on the top. And this is our chicken spread, which sounds like uh, something that is not rated PG, chicken spread, but, you know, it's li it's liquidy. This is bizarre that it's liquidy. It's okay, though. So we're going to make a, we're going to make a Dagwood. You guys know what a Dagwood sandwich is? Maybe that should be a trivia question. What is a Dagwood sandwich? So there we are so far. Let's see. Um, we have... Uh, before I put another one on there, I'm going to take a slice of the bacon. Uh, let's see. I do have some scissors. I'm just going to cut a piece off of the habanero heat bacon from Riff's Smokehouse. There we go. I'm going to sit that on, there on the top. We are going to take a couple, if we can find them, uh, relatively flat chips. And these are our hot pepper vinegar chips that are neither hot pepper or vinegary. Uh, let's see, it's one, two, three, four, five. Our Almond Brothers orange almonds with cayenne pepper, which were really, really good. Is this video over yet? It is not over yet, Sonic. Unless I said this an hour ago. Let's assemble those on there. There we go. What do you guys think? A little bit of everything in there. So we got our almonds, we got our chips, we got our bacon, we have our um, sardine pate, and we have our chicken spread. Cheers, and may God have mercy on my soul. The texture of the almonds is throwing me off on this. But strangely enough, I can taste the orange in the almonds. The sardine and the chicken spreads, they're subtle. They don't overpower the chip just sort of adds texture and potato taste. The vinegar and the kind and the uh, the pepper, hot pepper, do nothing. How much of this is hot? Those two are both supposed to be hot. There's no heat, no heat whatsoever. That's not bad. Again, the orange adds a sweetness to it, but it's not a crazy sweetness to it. It's not bad at all. So I'm gonna give it a thumbs up. I wouldn't want to eat a whole bunch of those. But altogether, not bad whatsoever. So let's go back and answer our last question. The question was, what was the original name of Dunkin' Donuts? Uh, let's see, what were some of the answers? Oh, it says chat disconnected again. Please wait, we'll try to disconnect you. All right, um, the questions were, I mean, the answers were, um, Tom said kumquat tea. Um, let's see, uh, John King said open kettle. Janice Yamanaka said open kettle. Um, Sonic said, "Nice sandwich." Um, and he said about something else, but the, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm going with it. Uh, Bob, R.A. Junior Music, said, "Open kettle." The correct answer was, in fact, kumquat tea. You're absolutely right, Tom. It's kumquat. No, it's not. It is actually called. Uh, it was actually called open kettle. So, open kettle was opened in 1948, um, and they officially changed the name to Dunkin' Donuts in 1950 uh, in Quincy, Massachusetts. By the way. We've actually been there um, for the blog. 
not for the YouTube channel. So maybe next time, next trip to Boston, I think maybe we'll go to the original Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, sadly, they just serve the same thing that every Dunkin' Donuts does. I doubt, I doubt they make them fresh there on site. Uh, so it, at the end of the day, it's just another Dunkin' Donuts. It is what it is. So I think that concludes our um, our live stream for today. I appreciate everybody being here. Uh, we had a very uh, lively crowd. Um, again, I always say this, but it's still the um, it's still a high point of my week. And, and again, my week has gotten a little bit crazier because I have started working. And I apologize to any of you who have channels if I haven't got caught up in your videos or live streams yet. And I promise that I will. Uh, but like I said, my time gets sucked up in uh, uh, with the job. We'll see if that improves over time. But I thank every one of you for joining us today. Uh, I, I really appreciate it. I think we have a great community here. Um, and I just love the way this has evolved. It's not like we have a lot of people. We don't have a lot of, of, of subscribers. Um, I would ask you, however, if you're watching this, if, you, if you're, watch, if you're on the, watching the live stream and you're not a subscriber, um, just go ahead and subscribe. So if you don't have a YouTube account, uh, you can just create a YouTube account. It's free. You don't even have to use your, your own real name. Um, you don't have to post YouTube videos or anything. And then just once you subscribe, just click on that little bell, and that little bell will send you a notification whenever time we put out another video. Uh, so go ahead and do that. Don't forget to, on the on the um, videos, to uh, put the, press the thumbs up, the, the thumbs up sign. Uh, that helps a lot. And don't forget to do the same thing with the other channels that we are affiliated with. So if you go to the main page of our YouTube channel, uh, I think it's called Featured Channels. Down at the bottom, there's a whole list of uh, featured channels. There are people that you talk to on a regular basis, including Tom, including Janice Yamanaka, um, who are on here. Hopefully John King soon, too. Uh, but uh, but again, check out their channels, uh, subscribe to their channels, and like their videos. I would not endorse them if I didn't like their videos and I didn't like what they were doing, So I and I, and I do. Um, it just so happens that everybody, you know, everybody who we have an affiliated channel or we've done um, uh, collaborations with, uh, 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 Food Taster TV. There's another one. Food Taster TV. Awesome channel. So definitely check out check all those channels. Uh, subscribe if you get a chance. Make sure you like the videos. And you can do the same with Drip Food if you like them. So again, high point of my day. I really, really love the community that we have here. It's great. It's a high point of my, of, of my day. And I appreciate you all taking part of your day to, uh, to check out our live channel. Uh, it's always fun. So I will end it by uh, by telling you to please be careful. Please take care of yourselves. Definitely take care of other people. And we will see you soon. So bye, everybody.